Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, my name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to show you how to use Grid Search CV to hyperparameter tune a random forest model. Alright, so that's kind of our objective for today and before we get started, let me go ahead and look at the documentation for our Grid Search CV. So we are going to be using Scikit Learn Grid Search CV. And as you can see right here, the grid search CV does an exhaustive search over specified parameter values for an estimator. And it has um, different parameters that you can choose from. And then it has different attributes. And then if you scroll down here, you can see the different method that you can use with grid search cv so you can go ahead and read more about the grid search cv in the documentation if you want to but in this case we'll just go ahead and get started with the tutorial so earlier i did a random forest model and if you go through my youtube channel you find where i showed you how to build a random forest model and how to get the metrics for it so these are we are the initial results from the random forest model that i did we got a mean absolute error of 4.2 and then we got a mean squared error of 32.4 so basically the idea with a regression problem problem is that you want a lower error score right you are trying to get a model that will give you a lower error score and the idea behind hyperparameter tuning is changing up the parameters of the model trying to see if you can get a better model or a lower score in this case and um when i did this project when i did the ra original random forest model i just used the default parameters and this video is gonna be focused on hyperparameter tuning there a hyperparameter tuning using a random forest regressor model so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and import Grid Search CV. Model selection, import Grid Search CV. Control Enter runs the cell that you're currently in and Shift Enter runs the cell you are currently in and create a new cell below it. So GS, let's just call this um, Grid search CV model is equal to random forest regressor. So earlier I imported random forest regressor, but I'll go ahead and import it again here. So I have random forest regressor here from scikit-learn, and I have grid search CV from scikit-learn. And I'm just gonna instantiate our model, and I'm just gonna um, do random states equal to 42. And basically, this random state. What it does is every time I run this code, it just makes sure that I get the exact same result. Now let's go ahead and establish the parameters for our grid search CV. So whenever you are doing a grid search CV, it is best for you to experiment with one parameter at a time. Some people make the mistake of inputting a lot of different parameters in your grid search CV. It is just better for you to just um, search for one parameter at a time. You could also use random search CV. And in a different video, I'll show you how to do a random search CV. But random search CV is very similar to grid search CV, but in this case, we're just doing a grid search CV. So let's establish our parameters. And the parameter that I want to look at here is the number of estimators. That's the first parameter that I want to hyperparameter tune. So I'll say n estimators. If you look at the random forest regressor documentation, you'll see that n estimators is one of the parameters that you can tune. So let's give it a number of estimators. Let's do 50, let's do 200, let's do 300, 400, 500, 600 why not let's just do all the way to 700 for example 
And so we've um, identified this is establishing what parameter to hyperparameter to. Now, now that we've done this, and the next step is so let's just call it search and let's do equal to grade search CV. And we are saying that our estimator is um, the model that we instantiated earlier. So basically, in this case, the estimator is like what model uh, should I be using in this case? And we are saying that um, parameters grade. is equal to params. So basically we are saying this is the parameters we want you to search. And then here I'm gonna also put n jobs equal to negative one. So basically n jobs is like how many processors should I use? N jobs, the default is none. And basically this allows you to do parallel processing using your processors on your computer so the default is none but if you do negative one that means to use all the processors on your computer and that's good if you're not going to be doing anything else but if you put something like negative two it will use all the processes on your computer except one so it will if you have eight processors it will use seven and leave one so you have like one processor left to be able to do other tasks without your computer lagging you know so that's basically n jobs, and in this case, I'm saying just to go ahead and use all the processors. And also, when you are working in Google Colab, you can use GPU. Like if you're doing something that's like intensive, or if you have a large data set and you don't want it to take forever, you can use GPU. And to use GPU in Google Colab, you go to runtime, change runtime type, and then from here you choose GPU. And whenever you do this, you have to restart your runtime. All right. So that's how to use GP in Google Colab. Let's go ahead and run this. So we've done our grid search CV. We've instantiated our grid search CV model. So now we are going to do search model is equal to search dot fit. We want to fit our training data. And then we want to fit our training target. So let's go ahead and run this. And this might take a while. And this is when the GPU comes in very handy. And also the processor. So finally, our model is done. So just so you know, this is going to take time to, to do. Right. So after our model is done running, we want to find out the best parameters. So this is the parameter we passed in for the grid search CV to evaluate. Now we need to find out which one of these is the best estimator for this project. So to do that, we just do search model dot best params parameters we want to find out the best parameter so our grid search cv found that 700 is the best parameter for number of estimators for our random forest regressor model so that's pretty cool we can go ahead and let's say experiment and do this whole process again but let's say try out um, different parameters but before we do that let's go ahead and use the model that we just fit to kind of do predictions. Let's go ahead and do search model dot predict and let's use it to do prediction on our X test and our Y test. We want to use it to pressure on just our S test. <laughs> that was weird. All right. So we got our predictions from our great search CV model using 700 as the estimator and whenever you build a model you want to have a way to evaluate the model's goodness how good is a model or how bad is a model really you know so for the original random forest model that i did without 
um, any hyperparameter tunings just using the default parameters. This is the score that I got from the mean absolute error and the mean squared error. So using an estimator of 700, uh, now I want to also get the mean absolute error and the mean squared error to see if it's better or worse than just using the default parameters. So let's go ahead and get this matrix for our current model. With that matrix, you won't know how to evaluate your model, right? So let's go ahead and get the matrix and let's go ahead and import from sklearn dot matrix import mean absolute error mean squared error so let's evaluate our model let's call it mean absolute error for the search and let's say it's equal to mean absolute error and let's pass in our true value our true value is always the fourth thing and then our predicted value is the second thing so and now let's get the mean squared error for our model And again, we pass in the true value and then the predicted value. All right, let's go ahead and print out this result to see what our score is. So this is the mean absolute error from our grade search. And this is the mean squared error from our grade search, right? Let's compare that to our default without using any hyperparameters at all. So you can see that using um the default random forest model gave us these error scores and using the random forest model with a an estimator of 700 gave us this result so the results are not significantly different we can further explore our model by doing something like so if we do something like search model dot best estimator we can kind of see more values and as you can see in our random forest regressor model everything all stays the same like all the default is here and then our number of estimators is 700 that's the only thing that we change right because that's what we hyperparameter tuned so now i'm gonna repeat um this hyperparameter tuning process but this time we'll be tuning a different parameter so basically what I have here is very similar to what I have above, but, but this time things are going to be different here. Since I know like the best estimator is 700, I'll just go ahead and put it here and put an estimator equal to 700. And this time the parameter that I'm going to be searching is going to be different. This one I want to be looking at max depth. And I'm going to give it numbers between 5 and 25. So 5. So the estimate I'm going to be searching for right now is maximum depth. And here, I may have to put my end jobs here just to make this faster. I'm going to put it at negative 1. And basically everything else stays, stays um, the same. We can go ahead and name this 2 just so we know. Our estimator parameters is this and the number of jobs. And I want to go ahead and print what the best parameter is. Now let's go ahead and run this code. And basically we are going to repeat this process um, two or three times to kind of um, experiment with different parameters. So we are done. Again, this um, took some time. And um, based on what we got here, the maximum depth is 25. And again, the score um, didn't change much compared to what we have above. So I actually didn't change this. That's why the score didn't change. I was like, that doesn't look right. So I made a typo here. And I'm just going to copy this part of the code. And put it here. And let's run this again. 
so again well the score didn't change um that much but it's not the exact same thing as above <laughs> yeah so basically our score didn't change much compared to what we did earlier and again we can repeat this process and let's say do something like maximum so basically we can repeat the same process again and this time since we know that the maximum depth is 25 we can use that here something like max depth let's say that's equal to 25 and then in this situation let's search for maximum futures and let's just take a guess for the maximum futures let's do two four six eight ten for example and again the same thing nothing changes here so for this one we add um, hyperparameter tuning for maximum future to consider for each split and let's go ahead and run this and see what uh, the maximum future is so this grid search cv is done and here right it's telling us that the maximum future is 10 but actually this time our score is worse than it was before so basically the point of this video was to show you how to do a grid search cv using a random forest regressor and i'm gonna also do this again but i'm gonna do it with a random forest classifier and I'll probably do this again, but I'm going to do it with random search CV instead of great search CV. But the basics of this video was showing you how to run a great search CV using a random forest regressor model. And basically, once everything is done, you can combine all your results into one model so basically using um the best results that we've gotten based on the few great search cvs we've done so far we could put put it all together in, to create one model that you could potentially use as your final model that's assuming that your score just keeps increasing and um, that's assuming your score keeps getting better or your model keeps getting better so we are going to be using all the scores that uh we get from doing our great search CV to do one last model. And this may be better than the than using the default or it could be worse, but we don't know yet. So basically just using a combination of the factors we got from our great search CV. This is the error scores that we got. And then, but this is the error score that we got from just using the default value. So just using the default parameters gives us a lower error score than using the combination of per parameters we got from our great search CV. But the whole point in this is not necessarily to get like the best score or to get the lowest error score. I just wanted to show you how to use a great search CV for hyper parameter tuning. You can always find me online at evidencen.com. That's my primary website. We have data science blogs. And as time goes by, I'm going to add more and more stuff to my data science blog. And if you go to my free data science resources, you'll be able to get access to this notebook. So I create a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of blogs. And I just find it easier, more straightforward to take all my data science resources and put it in one place. For you to get access to it and sometimes i release videos on this platform long before i release them on youtube or you can also go to machine learning education.com which is my primary platform and once you are here you just click on free data science resources and you, you also be able to get to this page or you can just go to machine learning education.com slash free to get access to my free data science resources. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you made it this far in this video but you didn't like it, please give it a double thumbs down and stay subscribed to the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye.